Hello, welcome to Legislative Update. I'm Nanette Bulabash. I am here co-hosting this program with my good friend, Jim Baumgart. Glad to be here. Uh, he is so kind to let me join in on his show the last couple of months. It's wonderful. We're here on the UW Sheboygan campus, the studios of WSCS. So we're thrilled that they're willing to program, uh, to host us here. Um, today we have a wonderful guest, Jennifer Estrada from Voces de la Frontera, which is an organization that has chapters all over the state of Wisconsin. Um, but also in Sheboygan County. Mm -hmm. So tell us about who you are, Jennifer. You are the statewide organizer, I understand. Tell us about yourself and the organization. Correct. Um, yes, thank you for having me. <laughs> I appreciate Pleasure. it. Um, yeah, I'm the statewide organizer for Voces de la Frontera. We are a grassroots operation um, out of, based out of Milwaukee, but like you said, we have chapters now growing to 11 chapters Great. this year um, all over the state and we provide help and support for immigrant our immigrant communities um, we have services such as uh, English classes citizenship classes deportation defense um, we keep them also updated on all the laws that are coming or trying to come into mm -hmm. effect and, and how we can protect and um, protect the immigrant community community but also get them integrated into our community and make sure that they know that they are a part of our community they um, provide so much support into our economic yes. Um, yes. state of this especially the dairy state um, we have right. so many um, immigrants that work the dairy farms um, and just to kind of help the public get over some of those um, misconceptions, misconceptions. yeah exactly yes. on, on who immigrants are and how they contribute to um, our state and our communities. I, and, and you um, reminded me of something that I didn't fully appreciate. I always assumed Voces de la Frontera was just for Latinos, but it's for any immigrant. It who, is. Because we have a wide variety here in Sheboygan, not yeah. just Hispanics, but from Syria, from other Middle Eastern countries, African countries, Somalia, um, Europe, and all over. Yeah. And so you provide services to help all of those. We do, and actually we'll be celebrating um, on the 7th as a, with a big citizenship kind of gala of all the people that have become new citizens through our program. This year we're already a little over 200. Wow. Um, and it isn't just from Mexico or El Salvador, Guatemala. We do help um, people from all over the world. Oh, that's so that's, that's, yeah, it's enlightening. So the reason I wanted to have you, I first learned about your organization on the local level about a year ago, last March 2017. I was um, there to watch and participate in this huge civic activity in front of Sheboygan City Hall. And you were protesting a bill, uh, was to, uh, the number was 200. Mm -hmm. And um, it was phenomenal because this 500 people crowded in front of City Hall on yeah. Center Street and then were able to join some of them into City Hall and successfully, and because we have a great Sheboygan City Council, mm -hmm. they shut down that bill. Yes. But that's not true everywhere. So tell us about that bill, and I know it relates to this beautiful sign here. Yes. Um, yes, that was great. And the, we have been fully embraced by the Sheboygan community and the City Council. Like you said, are amazing. Um, they, they helped shoot that bill down. That bill is kind of like a mimic of what Waukesha is going through right now. The 287G, 287G program was one of the 23 applications that were accepted by the Trump administration. Um, Milwaukee was also included in that, but they actually had got, it had gotten turned down. <laughs> we have a little bit higher presence in Milwaukee, but in Waukesha, sadly, it was, it was um, passed. So the sheriff had applied for this program. It was then granted by the Trump administration. So... Um, he would reserve federal funding if he would train his officials to act as immigration agents. Mm. So pretty much if you are an immigrant and you are in the community, if you're driving, they have the right to pull you over. And when they pull you over, they have the right then to ask you your, um, your status. So saying, hey, show me. It's like the SB4 in Texas that we all heard of, the show me your papers. That's a law. This is a program. Um, and that has mm -hmm. been Im implemented now in Waukesha. So that is our, our huge campaign. It's, it's ripping families apart. It's, it's creating fear. Um, we just had um, last Friday, we actually had a community forum with the immigrant community, with the police chief, with the mayor. And, and the, the chief of police and the mayor are completely against this, but yet because the sheriff has the power to apply for it and it mm -hmm. got granted, <clears throat> they have to, uh, well, at least the sheriffs will have to um, abide by that program. But police don't have to. The police do not. And um, the, it's sad that it's creating even like a divide between our, our local law right. enforcement because they're saying, hey, we don't want anything to do with this. 
um, it's going to create for um, victims of a crime. Say if, if you are a victim of a crime, an immigrant is the witness, they're not going to want to step forward and be the witness to that crime because they're in fear of, I hey, see. we could get deported. We could get deported. So say you are someone of, say, Hispanic descent or, or just maybe an African-American, you're driving along, you're, you've lived here your whole life, you were born here, you don't have papers with you. Mm -hmm. So somebody stops you and you can say, well, I was born in Wisconsin. But how do you prove it? Exactly. That's, that's I nice. mean, and the, and the, the sad part is after proving it, then you are, initially, then you are going to be treated like a criminal because if you don't have that paperwork to prove where you're from, you will be taken mm -hmm. down, you will be fingerprinted, you will be mugshot, you will like, be pretty much penalized like a criminal even though you're not. Yeah, over wow. 50 years ago, I, uh, for many years, I was in the scouting movement, and over 50 years ago, uh, part of our troop had a couple of Hispanic uh, uh, children that were uh, Boy Scouts. And how that happened was that uh, their dad was a migrant laborer from Texas, a citizen all of his life. Mm -hmm. He would come up for a number of years. Finally, uh, he met his uh, wife-to-be and married and uh, got a job at Kohler. Um, those kids are still in the community. Mm -hmm. They could be stopped, yeah. and they're not carrying any kind of papers. Because why would you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're, you know, they're, they were there before some of the first, uh, my, my, uh, 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 grandfather who came over through, from the old country. Uh, these uh, 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 Hispanics from Texas have been there for hundreds of years, some of them. Right. So, yeah. So, yeah, it's sad. And so I mean, you really get caught in a, to a, uh, a situation you, to, you, you may not be able to show that you're right. um, a citizen and yet you are. Yeah, it's like a catch-22. It's there, you know, they're using this as a legal way to racially profile people. Okay. And I mean, it's sad. It creates fear. Um, not only for the immigrant community, but then it's like, well, why are they doing, you know, the people that are not immigrants and don't fully understand the system, they're, they, they have this fear thinking, well, why are they doing this? And what, should we, what should we be afraid of? Right, right. So it's, it divides the community it and divides yeah. families. It divides right. families, which, which yeah. Doesn't, and I understand that for you this is personal. It is personal. I started organizing um, with Fosa de la Frontera in 2009 just as a volunteer. Um, in 2012, it got a little bit serious for me. I had my husband of 16 years, um, father of my children, uh, was picked up by the local police um, saying that there was an ICE hold on him. Um, ICE has, stands for? ICE for um, Immigration and Customs right. Enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, they had taken him into custody. Um, I, we are personal friends with the, the local law enforcement in Manitowoc, where we live. Um, they had called us because my husband was a volunteer at the YMCA. Mm -hmm. um, we were really integrated into our community, um, worked at the same job for 10 years, paid taxes, <clears throat> everything, all the misconceptions that there are. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, we did. You have um, five, five children. We have five children, yeah. Um, and my, the, the local law enforcement had called me and they said, hey, uh, we, this is the first time we've ever had to do this, but um, your husband has been put on ice hold. We have him down here. They even actually allowed me to go in and sit with him in like an interview room, which they probably shouldn't have allowed, but they did because they didn't even fully understand like what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, I was allowed to see him and they said, well, if, if, if ice does not pick him up in 48 hours, he, he, can, he has to be released. In an hour tops, <laughs> um, ICE had come from Dodge County, um, and they had came to pick him up. At that time, they had transferred him, transferred him to Dodge County, and he was put on an ICE hold. Um, and it only because my husband came here when he was 15. Um, he was the only one that came across his whole family. He's a family of 10 kids. <laughs> so he had come across to help try work um, and support his family there. Um, he was sending money home. He was sending money home the whole time. Yes. So he came, was working here. Um, we had we met, we fell in love. He started his family here, but still continued to help his family in Mexico. Um, and then in 2000, oh, 1999, we had started the process with a lawyer, a not a very good lawyer, um, who gave us some very bad information saying that we couldn't um, legalize his status here, that we would have had gone to Mexico to do it. Which so, wasn't true. Which wasn't true, but we were young and... Mm -hmm. Totally naive. This is before we had How would you children. Know that? We didn't know, right? The immigration system, even like being directly involved in the immigration system now and dealing with so many cases, it's still changing in a, on a, on such a rapid rate. Like there's always right. something new coming up. There's always oh, there's this ban. There's there's something getting taken. There's something getting given. And, and even under President Reagan in the '80s, he had yeah. a whole different attitude about immigrants. Yeah. So, so it's very understandable that 
someone who was here would have a different um, view of their future here. Correct. Because it was more tolerant. It right. Was, I was completely ignorant to the fact. So when he got picked up, I was, I mean, th I thank God uh, and, that I had an organization like Voces of the Frontera to like pull off of because I was completely okay. confused and ignorant to the fact that, hey, what was going on? Why is, you know, he's a law ab abiding person. He doesn't have a criminal record. Like they're trying to say, we're getting rid of all the criminals. He's a father. He's a husband. He's active in the community as a volunteer, 10 years at the same job and we pay taxes. So everything that they say that they were doing was the exact opposite of what my husband was. Um, so when my husband went and had gotten picked up, <clears throat> He um, then was put into detention, and because he had come across twice, there was no due process. Mm. He was not even allowed to see a judge. It was an automatic deportation. He was gone. So um, we, we got to see him for about a month, going back and forth from Manitowoc to Dodge County. Um, and remind you, I was a stay-at-home mom at the time. He was our breadwinner. So for oh to gosh. take that breadwinner out of a house, and now I'm stuck with, you know, I had a newborn. I had young so children. So you had to pay no. the rent and you had to buy the food and everything yeah. on nothing because they, you know, they took them. And thank God, I mean, like where he was working, I had a lot of backing through Voices of the Front that I well, had a lot of backing. So, but so, but sounds like quite a Christian group there. Yeah. So yeah. how is he now, and how are your daughters now? So yeah. it's hard. It, um, I mean, I know you pr you've had the chance to hear my daughter, daughter speak. speak in yeah, January. she at a march. She speak at, at Senate hearing that, it, and she's something that broke my heart. Even as a, not only just being her mom, but just as a person, like. I didn't realize how much it affected them, but um, she, you know, she said what what is most impactful, like, yeah, they are a product of the system, and they're left, the children are left to pick up the pieces. Mm -hmm. I mean, she has to see her dad through Skype. He can't be here for any of the important events her of her life. The graduations, year. prom, you know, anything, anything that she does, she's involved in music, nothing. Mm -hmm. And that's sad. I mean, it's sad that kids also have to live with that fear of, hey, my parents went to work, and are they coming home? And this is happening well, to thousands of people throughout thousands. the country. And in Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. In Wisconsin. Yeah. Um, we've had so many, like, recent dairy raids. The dads go to work. Uh, ice comes in. They take them. And they don't return home. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the mothers, I mean, I personally feel for them because I know what it feels like to be that mom with the husband being right. the breadwinner. They're at home with the young children and getting that phone call of, he, your husband's not coming home. And, and then not knowing that end result of, is he going to get shipped to back to his country or is he coming home to us? And we're almost running out of time yeah. already. <laughs> but I just want to make the point because you've mentioned farms quite a yes. bit. And we have this, this program here, Got Milk. And what you do, you say, Got Milk thank an immigrant yeah. because I do not believe in 2018 we would have a dairy industry in Wisconsin we without immigrant we workers. We need them now. Yeah. Yeah. So this is, this, this is hitting home you yeah. and, it, and Wisconsin's heritage Agreed. requires yeah. this. In, for, we have mm -hmm. to do something about immigrants. And these are good workers. Yeah, they, they are. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. Great, and, great and sadly, people is. don't understand the immigration system, that there is no real visa available for agriculture. So there's nothing that they can really do to even become a legal permanent resident. And that's sad. Yeah. Yes. Well, we will definitely have to have you back, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your time. Thank you, everyone here. Thank you, Jim. Uh, tune in next time to Legislative Update. And then